Hey loves, it's your favorite blind chick back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. I asked you to ask me anything and you did. I asked on the community tab as well as on the gram and here are your 21 questions answered. Let's jump right in with the first question which I loved it so much I answered right away on Instagram. It's, do you think you'd have different current friends if you weren't blind? Short answer, yes. Long answer, perhaps. If I wasn't visually impaired, I wouldn't have worked at the jobs that I had. And most of my friends are from past jobs. If you watch my Working While Blind video, then you know that I didn't choose to work at any of these jobs. Rather, the jobs chose me. There are things that I could do with my visual impairment. So if I didn't work there, I wouldn't have met these people. And even though I didn't love the jobs, I'm grateful for the experiences and the blessings I've met through the people that I know nowadays. I have about four friends that I had from back in the day before I was diagnosed that have grown with me as my degenerative disease has worsened over time. So there's that too. How do you deal with it mentally? A lot of people ask me this. It comes down to GPP, which I mentioned before. That's gratitude, positivity, and presence. Those three are my major keys. What are your dreams? Ooh, questions like these are so hard. It's this and describe yourself or what's your five-year plan? That are the hardest questions in the world. Ooh, I don't have very many dreams. Honestly, since I've been diagnosed, it kind of threw out my old dreams out the window. But if I were to dream now, I would say I definitely want to travel more, see what I can see while I can still see as well as one day have a family, live in a bigger place than this. I'm over this studio life. Um, I just, I definitely want a one plus den until I get my home home. I want a fulfilling career that is not only creative, but helps me connect and build a sense of community and healthy hair. Cause I've been fighting this hair for a couple months now. Those are my dreams. Simple dreams, low key dreams. What's the biggest life lesson you learned in 2021 and why? Ooh. First of all, 2021 is just 2020's B-side. We flipped that cassette over and it's the same album, just different tracks. I'm over it. I'm ready for a new album over here. But what have I learned in the last four months? First of all, how has it been four months already? This year is flying by. Contentment and comfort with self. That would be it. A couple years back, I wouldn't be able to be alone with myself as much as I am because I wasn't comfortable in my skin. So I'm happy I did the work before now so that I can actually enjoy all the peace that this pause has brought. Why did you delete so much of your old content? I blame The Minimalist. I watched both of their documentaries, listened to a pod, and then the Less Is More Challenge. I went on a digital declutter rampage. I deleted more than 200 of my old videos. I figured if they weren't hitting and you weren't clicking, there was no point in keeping the content up. Maybe it was messing with the algorithm. And besides, you know, I moved past that phase in my life. So I was like, let me just let it go. Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Nope. When did you get into yoga? When I was 25. So seven years ago, I was miserable at AF. I couldn't do my hip hop classes anymore because I couldn't see myself in the mirror. And even though Jojo was a gem and he would practice next to me and show me how to move, I just wasn't hitting the moves right. So I bowed out gracefully. Who am I playing? I bowed out very ungracefully because I was looking a mess at the end of it. And then I stumbled upon yoga. Someone dropped off a pamphlet one day when I was working as a hostess and I was like, you know, you know what, let me just try this. It didn't require a lot of vision and it really boosted my self-esteem. How do you know to move your camera and stay in frame without losing focus? Luckily, I started my channel before my vision got as bad as it is today, so a lot of things I do from memory. On top of that, this camera is blessed. It's the 70D and when it came out, I wanted to buy the 80D. I always like to be a little tech snob and buy the newest edition because I figure I keep my tech until it runs into the ground. Might as well get the newest thing on the market. But when I did my research, the ADD didn't focus nearly as well as this one did. So I went with it and thank God I did. This has been a lifesaver. The autofocus is really good. I'm very rarely out of frame or focus. What is the worst part of losing vision? Ooh. <laughs> How much time do you got? I had a lot. The worst part if I had to narrow it down to two would be losing your sense of self and then losing the life that you thought you would have. Yeah. Those are the hardest part of losing vision. Oh, no, no. Oh, even worse than those two is wanting to look forward to a future that you may not be able to see. Have you been discriminated against? 
it doesn't say legally blind, so I'll do both sides. So I've been discriminated against way more for being black than I ever have for being blind. But when it comes to visually impairment, the people that have discriminated me the most, plot twist, are other visually impaired people. People are telling me that I'm not blind enough or that I'm doing a disservice to the blind community because I don't have a dog or a cane, even though I explained to them that I'd be doing a disservice to blind people like me by just adopting these things that don't work for people like me. A dog or a cane cannot read the things I need to see. I have, we're not gonna get into in this video. We're not gonna get into in this video, but if you wanna know, you can watch some of my other videos. A lot of people ask me different versions of this. How do you do your makeup or how do you get your makeup to blend? Beauty Blender is the sponge for me. I'm telling you, that is the key to getting your makeup to be impeccable. I can't see my face, even when I use my 10X Zoom mirror, sometimes I'd be missing things, so if you see it, don't judge me. I'm also gonna do a get ready with me at the end of this month to share all my tips and tricks, so wait for that and stay tuned. This question gets me every time. If you can still see, how are you blind? Half the people ask me this because they're trying to be smart with it, like how are you really blind though? The other half just want to know because a lot of us are sold the picture of blindness is a white male with dark glasses and it's not that, it's not just that at least. By law, I'm legally blind, that's why it's called legally blind. So once you pass 2200, which means whatever you can see at 200 feet, I can barely, barely see at 20 feet. I'm well past 2200. Last time I asked, three years ago, I was 2400 and I stopped asking at the last three annual checkups, so who's to say what it is today? But what I do know is I wouldn't wish this on anybody. So for everyone who thinks that I'm not really blind or I'm doing this for the gram or the clicks or the views, trust me, you wouldn't want to be my shoes. How's dating while blind? A mess, but I don't think it's because I'm visually impaired. I think it's just a mess out there. Let's talk about digital dating versus in living color because they're completely different. When I'm dating someone in real life, they're so chill with it, they're comfortable, they're actually interesting. I've had guys be like, it's the blindness for me, and I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm not mad at you, I'm happy that you don't discriminate. It's a little different online. I used to have a prompt on Hinge that said, you'd never guess, or one thing people don't know about me is, I'm legally blind. And all the time, like out of 100 guys, 90, I would say 90 to 92 of them would ask me about my eye disease, which is cool, but then it felt like I was in school. It was like blindness 101 and I was professor blind teaching them about vision loss. And I'm like, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm trying to get to know you. I guess you're trying to get to know me, but at the end of the day, I would just ghost them because it wasn't going anywhere. Then I took it off my profile and I feel like the conversations are more normal, but I'm just like, when do I share? And is that deceitful though? I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Describe yourself before you're blind and after. Oh, I want you guys to answer this question too, so leave it for me down below. I would say it's so strange when I look back at my life 21 and before when I was not visually impaired and since. I would say I thought I knew it all back then. And it's funny because I thought I was so grown at 21, but being 32 now, I feel like a baby. But if I feel so young and so new to everything, what was I back then, a fetus? So I would say hard-headed because I was Scorpio vibes on level high back then. Now I would say grounded. A lot of things have changed over the last decade. So I would say grounded is one word I would describe myself as because that's the thing I'm most proud of. After everything I've been through, endured, experienced, enjoyed, I've learned to become grounded in the moment. Why do you live alone? I bet you wouldn't ask if I wasn't blind. I live alone because I want to be independent. Isn't that a reason why most people live alone? I don't have roommates because I don't want to catch a case. I don't know, man. I'm the type of person I love people, don't get me wrong, but I'm an introvert so I need my wind down time. Now if I'm living with my man or my family, that's a little bit of a different story, but a stranger, a roomie, a friend, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Where would you be if you weren't legally blind? I try not to think of this so much. For the first five years of living with this disease, that's all I thought about. My life would be so much better if I wasn't blind. I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't blind. This is the worst because I'm blind. So I had to take that thought and literally throw it out of my mind. Let's just play around with it for a bit. I know I would definitely be driving because that's one thing that I miss. 
I don't I can't say that my life would be better or worse because who's to say there might have been something else that happened to me or for me or whatever they say I think I would have made different choices in my relationship there's a lot of things I told myself to be complacent with because I could not do better because I was visually impaired which is really messed up I probably wouldn't have worked at any of the jobs I've held for the last 10 years and who knows I might not even live here I think I would have loved trying to live in a different part of the planet exploring and experiencing a different culture you know has losing vision stopped you from doing things in life yes a lot how much time do you got <laughs> i would say it stopped me from driving for example i haven't read nearly as many books as i'd like to on average it takes me about six months to finish a book because i can only read one page mind you on my phone one page is literally two sentences so there's that i for a while, I wasn't in the dating scene because I just didn't feel like dealing with it. And I think if I wasn't visually impaired, I'd put myself out there more. But again, who's to say? You never know, right? The jobs I had, ugh, I, I haven't applied to certain jobs in certain fields because I know that my limitation would actually make it or break it for me. So it's, there's an honest moment there. How do you know if your meat is cooked if you can't see it? Did you watch my video, What I Eat in a Week, 28 Meals? Most of what I do is from memory. The things I chef up are usually things that I cook all the time, so I just go off of memory. If I'm trying out a new recipe, I mean, sometimes it's got to be well done because I'd rather it be well done than succulent with salmonella, right? Are you happy in Canada? Are you trying to come save me? What's going on? I mean, aside from the way the government has handled the Rona, yes, for the most part, I'm happy and proud to be Canadian. Growing up with Caribbean immigrant parents, they taught me to be grateful for literally everything. You know what it's like when you don't finish your food, they tell you about the person in Africa that hasn't eaten and it just guilt trips you. But my mom did that to the 10th degree with everything, so I've always been hyper aware of my privileges. So as a Canadian, yes, it may not be the most perfect place on the planet, but it definitely comes with its blessings. And all things considered, I am happy here. If you could travel back in time, what would you change? Okay, we'll do it from a visually impaired perspective and then nothing to do with sight loss. Okay, visually impaired, I would definitely experience more. Knowing how much vision I've lost in the last couple of years, I wish I did more when I saw more. From a just general perspective, I would have traveled more, just done everything more like I said, but also I think I would have taken a different degree. I don't know, I think I've spent my money differently. Growing up, we didn't have a lot of money, so when I started to make money, I A, started saving it like a fiend, and B, started spending it like a fiend, which is why my closets are so full. I think I would have used my money and invested it, and as well, instead of buying so much clothes from Aritzia, I probably would have used it to go on adventures. That would have made way more sense. Last question, if there were a cure tomorrow, what's the first thing you would do? Ooh. I want to be so basic with it and say buy a book and read it cover to cover because I miss turning a page and actually seeing what's on it, but we got to think big here. You can tell I'm not a big dreamer. Probably travel, you know, like a Euro trip, but probably Africa or Asia and just not backpack it because you see these curls, I can't do that. But I would definitely love to just explore the world and not have to worry about the safety of not being able to see things clearly. Just being able to get up and go and not have to always pack my phone to zoom in like that would be amazing to see someone's facial expression from across the street to experience a culture fully oh that's what i would do the first thing i would do is definitely connecting flights because i hate connecting flights it's too much stress to try to find a gate you can't see so that wraps up this video i have got i got tons of questions that i love so maybe i'll do a part two or maybe I'll just ask you on a monthly basis what you want to know and we'll keep this game going. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, definitely hit the like button and subscribe for more 30 Days of Blind. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.